This time on the show, HD Moore talks Metasploit. Cos talks cross-site scripting smartphone apps. Brad from Level 1 sends a balloon across the pond, and Darren pipes a thing into a thing and makes something happen. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Dice. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. I'm not feeling so well, so. I noticed. Just enough. I'm feeling great. I'm in debug mode. I had some sweet tarts and some candy beforehand. You know, there was somebody at DerbyCon who had a huge jar of those little lollipops. And I swear to God, I must have eaten like half of them. Oh, I see. So you got you got candy. You get like a sugar high from DerbyCon, and I got a cold from DerbyCon. I had a fantastic time at DerbyCon. I did, did you too. not? As yes, well? it was so much fun. I got to work the table in the vending area again, kind of like DEF CON, but it was a lot, it was more laid back this time. Well, it was time, totally and southern, I totally you know what I'm liked saying? It. Yes. Yeah, oh my God. We went out to dinner and I had sweet tea and grits, shrimp and grits. <laughs> okay. Well, I had a, a fantastic time. I know that we're going to be coming back to this conference. Um, Definitely. Thankfully, like it's just been conference back to back. We actually have a segment from HD Moore at the United Security Summit uh, in just a bit. Uh, that was here in San Francisco, and then we were at DerbyCon, and then I, thankfully, uh, or actually, unfortunately, we won't be able to make it to TorCon this weekend. Um, so that'll actually free up some of the con stuff. But then we will. We'll, uh, so we'll have to hit up TorCon next year for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I guess the next one is going to be ShmooCon. So, you know, Yay. look forward to that on the East Coast in D.C. It's going CES to be awesome. CES and then ShmooCon. Oh, yeah, CES as well. Oh, just when I thought it was good. Anyway. <laughs> Aw, you need to go to bed. Yeah. Go take a nap, buddy. <laughs> you know, um, some really exciting stuff has been happening with the uh, USB rubber docky project since we just launched it really? the other week. Um, already, like, I think, okay, so actually a whole lot has happened. So if you haven't been on the forums seeing all the good stuff there, uh, it's all at usbrubberducky.com is where you can find the links to everything. But um, Asorbic wrote, I just had to show this off because this is so cool. He wrote this this rubber ducky IDE and I can like be like Ram, Darren oh. is cool and then like, it's like a web -based um, GUI string, there? hello world and then enter and then like alt F4 and then because I don't want to save that file. There we go. All right. And then I just click quack and oh hey look at this. It downloaded an inject.bin. That's awesome. That's so fantastic. No, it didn't even have to use Java. It's so great. In fact, what he's even done is added like additional commands into um, the, uh, I guess, like un unofficial ducky script stuff. But okay. uh, repeat 10, oh. which is like when Pete and repeat are sitting on a log times. and then Pete falls off and then all that's left is repeat. Right. And Pete sitting on a. We've got good stuff this episode. Uh, Koss is with us to talk about cross site scripting. Oh, yeah, a gift yes. as well. Yes. Well, well, the. We got the rest of the awesome stuff segments. on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we got this in the mail. I'll let you open up okay. that little box. It's Andros. Or Alexander. Okay. So this comes yeah. from Craig in Wisconsin. He says, Darren and Shannon, I thought you two would get a kick out of this. I have enclosed for you guys the original before Microsoft took this over. Yeah, AKA killed it. It is Xandros. Sorry about the condition of the box. I would love to see if you guys can work some Linux magic or hack or revive this as well as to see if you guys can update the, the operating system. Wow. It would help to all who you think that this is a dead Linux operating system, unless it's truly DOA. So can it be updated? Can you guys add a new kernel, install the latest KDE or GNOME, stuff um. like that? It would be great to see on your show. I am not the uh, the person <laughs> that has the time or resources to do that, but I am fascinated by this. I, I never really played with Xandros, but it <clears throat> leverages a performance and reliability of Linux to create a secure desktop environment that breaks down the barriers wow. between Microsoft Windows and Linux. How cool! Hmm. It's got a simple five-step installation. Uh, I don't know. I don't think this is that old, though. Um, Hold up. Let me look. Hey, you know what? Uh, there's some fun good Linux stuff coming out by the time this airs, actually. 2002. Or, or even not wow, so yeah, it's soon not that after. 11.10 is coming out. You should try that out. You know what? I agree. I could do like a review of it, see what the changes were. Yay. OK. Good idea. Cool. Well, without further ado, uh, I want to throw it over to our interview with HD Moore, find out what is going on with Metasploit over at the United Security Summit. And then we'll be on the other side with more from DerbyCon. And I'll be debugging. 
Hacker Headlines? And there will be Hacker Headlines. All right. It's that easy. Word. <laughs> Here at United Security Summit 2011, the first one, and I'm here with the founder of Metasploit, HD Moore. How are you, HD? I'm oh, doing great, Darren. How are you? Huh, dude, it's so good to see you. It's so good to be here and see you guys doing a security conference in San Francisco, our own backyard. Uh, what brings you out here? Well, first off, it's a great location. We love the, you know, one, the weather, because Texas is on fire and 105 degrees right now. Um, but mostly it's the community, in the community in this area was really one of our target focus groups for our focus uh, attendees for this particular conference. What we're trying to do is a little bit different from most conferences. Often you see things like, you know, RSA that's very kind of, you know, CEO, CISO, CIO level. Uh, you see things like DEF CON that are, you know, quasi, you know, less professional, more amateur. Lots of professionals go to it, but it's not necessarily the business topics. We're trying to find something kind of in between here, where it's not quite just business. It's not quite just tactical, but a good mix of both, and including people from both the security vendor side, uh, the business side, academia, um, as well as the researchers and open source developers. So it's a good chance to really bring together, um, you know, the entire, uh, all the various stakeholders in security, have them kind of talk about problems, you know, dish it out, watch our academics fight with the business folks and so on. Uh, but in general, you know, focus on collaboration, focus on, you know, what are we doing wrong, what can we do to make things better, and actually host some collaborative projects. Nice. Well, I was at the party last night, and the feeling that I was getting with that everybody was saying that it was nice and small and intimate, and I hope that you guys can carry that forward no matter uh, where you bring this con. Uh, so tell me, Metasploit, the big thing with Rapid7, we just talked about Nexpos, but I'm really stoked about Metasploit because it's what our audience loves, the, whether the Community Edition or Pro. Uh, you guys had a big release, and we had, I didn't have the chance to talk about it at DEF CON. What is the latest with 4.0? Uh, so Metasploit 4 is the first major release in five years. Like we spent uh, years trying to figure out where Metasploit was supposed to go, what the direction was. What we saw is that how people were doing pen tests with the product had changed drastically over the last five years. Um, instead of just kind of like dot slash exploits to get a shell and something, it's more about, okay, I've got a shell, now what? Okay, I've got five shells, now what? I've got 100 shells, now what? And so it's building out all those automation tools and covering all those other areas of pen testing that Metasploit previously by itself didn't do. So we have discovery scanners, we've got things like uh, brute force login tools, uh, we have all sorts of stuff for passive analysis for men in the middle for you know tying into APs uh, as well as all the exploits so giving folks the ability to run the, you know all their other you know auxiliary and, and uh, you know post models things like that is part of their pen test in one place um, and really striving to consolidate that data into a single uh, uh, location. So previously, if you want to set up Metasploit with a database, it was kind of an afterthought. You really had to say, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or if you go and you get the latest backtrack, and you're like, ah, this is broken, and then you got SVN, and then you're like, oh, wait, what dependencies? Yeah, that's the biggest problem is users, you know, new users couldn't figure out the dependencies. Uh, experienced users had no use for the features that required the dependencies in the first place. And so we're trying to find something in the middle. So what we decided to do is just ship uh, the Postgres database with the product, uh, ship, you know, Java, all the various dependencies, all of Ruby, all the Ruby build scripts, configuration files, and Metasploit. It's, it's an operating system. It is, it is. So at this point, it's, it's self-maintaining. At some point, it becomes self-aware and walk off your machine. Oh, no. HD Moore invented Emacs. No. So, <laughs> so aside from taking uh, taking over your your machine, uh, this is hot off the heels of the book. The book was huge. I got the book. I love the book. And then 3.7 came out like the week after the book. Now 4.0 is out. What does that mean to anybody that's you know going through that guy? Well, the upside is the all the authors of the book, David, all those guys did a lot of uh, spent a lot of time working with our development team to make sure that the book was actually accurate. The only small change is difference between the release of the book and the release of Metasploit 4 is all the database commands no longer have the db underscore prefix. So host is now db host, you know, db loot is now just loot, and so on. There you go, Metasploit 4.0. It saves you three characters, db underscore. I mean, that's that's worth a version uh, of itself. So, uh, although I, I gotta say, I hear rumors that there might be a, an ASCII cow missing from this version. Is is that the case? Uh, fortunately, uh, Rob Fuller was um, uh, per pervasive enough to insert said missing ASCII cow back into the product before he shipped. So we had a four release in the very last minute. We got one little commit from Rob saying, "You know, commit this or I'll kill you." And it was basically the missing ASCII cow. So the ASCII cow is back where it should be. It may have some additional body appendages, but it's back. Go, Rob Fuller. Our, our friend Mubix, yes. All right, so, uh, so what else uh, is, is new within the product? Well, we're really focusing on uh, data correlation and basically being able to consolidate data in one place. So if you use the, the default install of Metasploit now, it automatically configures the database. Every single thing you do is tracked inside of a workspace inside the project. Uh, you can now do automation. You can do things like find every host that has a certain port open, then set the R host variable with that, uh, that host list automatically, and then to be able to run your exploits. So you want to say, like, scan an entire network, find everything at port 23 on the one one exploit. It's literally three commands now, and that's it. Now, what about like teams of users? Uh, is there any additional functionality if you know you and your three other pen testers are all working on the same host? 
there is a bit of split between the open source and the commercial side. I try not to you know, do too much product pitching, but Metasplit Pro is awesome for teams. Um, it has you know, a limited user count. You can have everyone collaborating with multiple pen tests at the same time. Uh, it's just it's an amazing product for, for team. Well, I mean, but that does make sense. Like That makes a lot of sense for the differentiation between the open source community edition and the pro product to be like, dude, if you've got like multiple pen testers on a single job, then obviously you're getting paid here and you know shell out for some good product, right? There's a couple ways to do it. So on the open source side, Armitage has a pretty good uh, multi-user uh, capabilities, which is great. We think that's awesome. On the pro side, it really focuses not just multi-user, but also all the fancy reporting, the automation, the workflow, all the you know accountability, all the audit logs, all the CYA stuff you need for pen testing. So it's a little bit of both. If you want just collaboration, kind of a team mode, of the IRC client mode, Armitage is awesome for that with Metasploit 4. I love that it's IRC collaboration as well, because that's the hacker way to do it. It's literally an IRC client baked into Armitage. That's a great way to do it. On the Metasplit Pro side, it's a little bit more formal, more corporate, more official, uh, but it scales much higher and it does a lot more things that you know nothing else really does at this point. Yeah, and I guess the difference is you're getting paid. So, dude, thank you so much, H.E. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and see what the latest is. If you're in tech, you need to be on DICE. DICE.com is all about connecting the best tech professionals with the jobs they want. DICE.com has over 80,000 of the hottest jobs in tech, from game developers to software engineers to Oracle DBAs. You can find tech jobs for the companies that you want to work for, like Adobe, Dell, and eBay. Here's a great opportunity on DICE right now. Adobe is looking for a senior systems engineer who will be responsible for conceptualizing and defining an end-to-end -end infrastructure solution design aligned with the overall architecture. This person will be working closely with SAP basis, global application teams, engineer technology groups, and database and storage administrators. Have you ever wanted to look for a tech job while you're on the go? Of course you have. Well, now you can with the new Dice.com mobile app. You can apply for Adobe's engineer job or one of the other 80,000 other tech jobs on Dice. Search and apply for jobs with your existing profile and keep current on the latest tech buzz with the Dice blog network. You're mobile. Now your job search is too. Download the free app at dice.com slash mobile. The black hat cats behind Zeus attacks. Payment providers, the fake transacts. Trustier found new versions of the Trojan, which alters web pages to fish for information. Speaking of which, Facebook flips the switch, partnering with WebSense for better browsing defense. When you click a shared link, that's suspicious. A pop up from FB says that's malicious. A popular component in Android, used by antiviruses, is prone to an exploit. Evil apps can turn off your AV and get around it. Macaulay, the privateer co founder, found it, and the IT head of UK Fast. With a GPU rendered short passwords cracked in four seconds, owned a password of six characters using the NVIDIA 220's processor. And a seven character password took five minutes to crack, eight character password, four hours. So if they really want you, it's just a matter of time. Peace to my man Fee. Hacker Headlines, Dale Chase. Back to you guys.